Here I am, Leon C. A. K. A. Morpheus. Without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and read several of my emailers and contactees. And I'm going to share with you stories which is going to tie into the subject. Now, what may tickle your fancy before I begin to read these emails that you must understand? There is several types of people in the world and you will be surprised that when you do the math, when you do the calculation or you sit down on your couch while you're listening to this or you're at work, working hard and hammering with your bare hands or pushing boxes around or maybe you just you're driving on the road right now and you're listening to the sound of my voice that means you are prepared for Morpheus to tell you something and which I am see there are some people who are around you who they don't they're not ready to learn anything. Some of these people are, are very old, to be honest. They're, they're of age where they feel like time is slipping away and they don't need to concern themselves about what's going on around in the world because they really don't have any intentions of doing anything about it. Because to them, their only concern right now is the time that they're losing and their own personal circles but then there are those who might be about between 30 and 40 who is just now coming across knowledge they've been around the block several times so now they're seeking answers for their life that they finally got the chance to do so by listening to these audios. So basically you'd be surprised how many people aren't interested in seeking the light. They're not interested in answer. They're not interested in somewhat making themselves better internally. They're more interested in just riding with the energy of the matrix. They're just so interested in just doing whatever the construct of mankind programs them to be they're comfortable in their space in their zone so maybe sometimes in your mind you may feel like this is pointless to talk about such matters and why am i gathering so much information what's the whole purpose of it all and why is it that i'm seeking to be better and listening to morpheus because it matters to you and it matters to probably a thousand other people as well. And it's important because the next generation need your information and you need the information so your eyes can become open. Now, getting to this emailer. Mr. Berkeley asked me a question. He says... Leon C, I've been in a relationship with a girl for four and a half years now. We've been struggling with two things. We've been struggling specifically in the relationship because she seems to have a very, she's very headstrong. And She's only interested in doing the things that are peace to her. No matter what I do, no matter what I talk to her about, I do my best to shine the light on how relationships should come together for the sake of the future. Just as what you say about us in America. Oftentimes they even have her sit down and we listen to your audio and we watch some other content creators that are actually talking about some of the similar things that you talk about. 
but she sh doesn't seem to get it. She still dresses as if she's single. She still ignores my requests and she's not interested in holding out the principles of a fair relationship. When it comes to religion, she's very headstrong with that as well, even when I show her the facts. I show her the contradictions in the Bible. I show her the history reports. Oftentimes we even listen to, again, other content creators that are actually talking about the facts that Jesus was a lie. And she still is so into it where there's nothing that I can say or do to convince her. I need your help with this. What can you say in this subject? I appreciate it. Thanks for all the effort that you put into these videos to share your information. All right, my American people. Yes, these are typical people who call in and they contact me. Yes, there are people who have these questions. And yes, there are many couples. See, he did a double-edged blade and it seems like it's happening a lot lately here in this new generation where it's, it's never one problem, but it's several problems. And again, it's always going to be religion sometimes and it's going to be relationships because that was one of the two major things that are going around the country because people need something to believe in. I'm not here to take away what you believe in. I'm here just to give you the facts. Now, I would tell you that I'm not a Bible scholar. Okay. But, of course, like many other people that you might meet, they'll tell you that they did read the Bible. That they have studied religion, as they may say. Okay. But I did a little twist as Morpheus. I did my experiments and... A pastor once told me years ago that I will never forget and he told the truth and I did just that. He said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. One of those passages that you commonly hear in the usual American church. Oh, taste and see. Basically, oh, taste and see. What do you do when you taste and see? You taste test. You test it. See if it's real or not. That means you are to try it out and see it. Now, funny thing is, that means you are supposed to hear what the teacher is saying, or the pastor. You take that to the outside world and you give it a try. You see what this, what your religion is all about. You study it. You go and you apply those measures to your real life. Listen to what Morpheus is saying. Listen. Because this is going to be a killer red pill for you. If you don't understand, that's because you're not listening to me. You're not hearing my words. You're too busy. You're too busy scoffing at the fact that the emailer talked about your Jesus. You need to be listening to what I'm saying before you make false judgments. Because it's not going to be on me. It's going to be on you at the end of the day. Because you're skipping. You are to go and you test drive the car. You go and you sleep at night in that new house. You go and you, for some of you who's in a relationship, you date the person for a little while. See what they're all about. You courtship with them. They become your fiance before marriage. Okay, that's what religion is supposed to be. That's when the pastor is preaching and teaching you. Oftentimes, you don't have the chance to do that because there is a Sunday, then there's, for some people, Bible study on Wednesday, then there's, there's prayer night on Thursday, or maybe even choir rehearsal during the week, and then you start all over again. You never take a break. You never put the Bible down. You never step away from your religion to try it out and see it for yourself. Now, be patient because this is going to be the subject that I'm talking about, okay? When you sit there Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, 
You're not, oh, taste and see. You're not going to test it. You're not going to put your prayers to the fire. You're not going to challenge what the pastor is saying. You're only in, you're only digesting information, which, well, just really perception that the pastors are giving you. Okay. You are to take what they say and you try it out. Okay. You do a hula hoop with it. You play jump rope with it. You put it down the quality control assembly line to see if the facts line up. Okay. It lines up with reality. And the problem is here. Now listen up. The problem is it most likely is going to line up. You say, wow, Morpheus, you didn't say that. What do you mean? I'm meaning that I already gave you the red pill already. And eventually it's going to work on you. Listen to what I'm saying. It's going to line up for the majority of people because of one really big thing that we do not get. Okay. It's called limiting ourselves to a single branch. Now, I got other videos that talk about this, but I'm going to just ex expand on it just a little bit. What that means is you haven't tried all its aspirations and aspects. Most times people don't pay attention to the world. They don't pay attention to their lifestyle. They don't pay, pay attention to the reality around them, but they will quickly comply their religion to what's going on in the environment, such as thinking it's the rapture or the end of the world or those. These are signs from God or their gesture. So they end up, you end up wanting See, the thing is with your perception of whatever belief it is, you end up wanting a situation to have something to do with your biblical belief. You want it to have something to do with it because you want significant proof and signage. You want validation that you are right to be sitting in your church and believing what the pastor is saying. So therefore with every other lifestyle, instead of going to gather like for example perceptions from the, the library going to gather the definitions of words from a dictionary outside of the bible reading from the quran reading from the hypocrypha reading from other catholic books reading from other religions or buddhism and it goes on it's going to read from their perspective without adding your religion or what the pastor tells you will enlighten you and it will show you that there is another side of the river. Therefore, you begin to understand that there is another branch to what you thought you knew. So therefore, it's another dimension altogether. But you don't see that other dimension because of the short sightedness and wanting that one belief to be so real that your grandparents believed in, your parents believe in, now you believe in. OK. And you're stuck there. You're stuck there. OK. And therefore, anyone who comes around who has a truth or has a challenge for you or has a fact for you or even evidence. OK. It will not line up. They will immediately be defeated by cognitive dissidence. OK. By ignoring the reality and the facts. That is true. Because any time when you want to really get technical with this, get technical with it, what you do to your mind is watch a debate sometimes or sometimes you watch a political debate or you watch even somebody on social media sit down with somebody across from them and they sit down and they debate. OK, what a debate is, is actually just a small challenge to um, to stand on your uh, your knowledge of the situation or the topic to stand on your perception or knowledge of the of the topic, whether it be true or not. Now, usually with that, there will be some truths and there will be some some revelations or some enlightenment on the subject that will either show you that you don't know all that you think, you know, or it will actually prove that you are right about what you say by adding the facts in the debate is not an argument so you do this to your mind 
You do this to your religion, to your Christianity, to your Muslim lifestyle, to your Buddhism, to your Catholic. You challenge it that way mentally to prove it right or wrong, okay, based on the reality, not based on what a person said, not based on emotion or perception, okay? So therefore, you're able to sit and listen to what people say. You're, these people who call in most times, they are religious people and they're looking for answers. If you notice, it's been happening in several of my audios that they're asking questions because they are questioning their religion and that's okay. That means you are waking up, Neo. That means you are on the path because what you wanna do before you, excuse me, pass away, before you say, I'm gonna put my complete heart and soul on this. Before you sign that contract of the car that you're gonna buy, before you sign the contract, before you get this house, you wanna make sure that you're absolutely sure. You wanna make sure that it's gonna be a life and death acceptance, okay? You cannot put your life and death's acceptance on a contract that's concerning your soul and your life on something that someone else passed on to you. You can't do that. That means you're not making a decision based on your own decision. You're making it based on traditional influence. And if you say, oh, well, it's real and I tried it, but who gave it to you to begin with? Who told you about that? So you got to find the river for yourself. You have to find your path for yourself to find out the truth of it so you yourself can be absolutely sure by all your senses, mind, body, spirit, eyes, ears, nose, taste. Okay? Now, you don't have to add on the bottom because we are mature in this because I'm going to go on to the next subject. Okay? You don't have to add on the bottom that, well, I've experienced it because I was drowning and somebody saved me. Yeah, there was a time where, you know, I could have died, but, you know, um, I think it was God that pulled me out of the car. And No, 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 no. Don't save that comment for something else because I have a video and audio for that. Okay? Just keep your thoughts and keep walking with me because this is only one lesson. There's several other lessons and it's not over. You know, if you put your hands up too soon... In the middle of the classroom while the teacher is still teaching you'll make yourself look embarrassed because the study your lesson is not over yet these are breadcrumbs just to put in your mind right now okay gather all the facts first then you comment okay now check this out here's the facts and here is the shangri-la people do not change now this ties into my emailer okay when it comes to the relationship and it comes to religion they conflict with each other they both have similarities because if you hear a lot of people who are so-called religious they will tell you before you even get a chance to i want to get married first before i'm going to be with you you need to marry me i'll blah blah blah, blah. okay no matter how bad marriage is for the man, no matter how crippling and evil that it is, no matter how much of a unempowered situation to be in, in a financial contract and uh, outdated because it's not functioning, especially for America, you will still see, you will hear them say, I want to get married. And you say, why? Because my religion says so. Wow. Really? <laughs> Because the Bible said it's better to marry than the bird. I don't want to be a sinner. And not once do you or whoever is telling you this sit back and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me slow down. Who told you that? Stop. Slow down. Slow down. Let me add. Okay. Morpheus is asking you. Who told you that? Who told you that? Another person told you that. God did not swoop out of the sky, did not sit down across the table from you in all its glory, in clouds, okay, with a feather pin, okay, and tell you this, another man 
or woman told you this and most likely your grandparents and who your church okay so you can cut the argument right there you didn't tell yourself that they did and over time you begin to accept it all right now the, re the relationship part of it how it's affected it's the same way it's the same way see People have a track record where they continue to be with the same woman over and over again or the same type of man over and over again. OK, continue to make the same mistakes trying to donkey dunk with people who are of low quality or even get with them or even try to keep that person who don't want to be kept over and over again. But your perception because they tell you, oh, you got to have a woman or you have to have a man. You have to do this in order to function in this world traditionally. And you think, oh, well, maybe I should. And you go for it. But like, why do I have to have kids? Why is it so important? And of course, you hear some old people who are of the old days. And it's not like that now in this generation. Well, you need to procreate and create the next generation of kids and people for America. OK, that's so. And you're like, wait a minute. Maybe I should. I want to pass on my genetics. I want to have a girl and a boy. OK, and then most of you, you have a boy and a girl and you screw up everything by not raising them right. That's very smart, very smart, because because mommy and everybody else pressured you to have a child. To have this beautiful, nice, uh, uh, fun, sometimes uh, money draining pocket irritation, sometimes most times full of responsibility, this great liability that you are willing to take on for the rest of your life without you being responsible or having the power to understand its complete function. Because if I was lying to you, America wouldn't be the way that it is today because these kids are out of control because of parents like you. You don't like it too bad. Morpheus, don't hold back punches. I'm going to be straightforward with you. You an adult. I'm an adult, too. Now, listen. Because most things that people do, here is your punchline. If I had a drum line behind me, I would make it. Here it is. Nothing to laugh about. The problem is people keep running until they run right into the brick wall. <laughs> That's as simple as it is. Thought it was complex, didn't you? People, listen, my emailer and you who are listening. People do not change. They change on their own. If they're not willing to line up to your program, if you're in a relationship with them, if they're personal with you, then you have the power to disconnect yourself. Corporations, jobs, you know, uh, collaboration, business partners, those kind of things are sort of different. They have their uh, their exceptions to the rules. But when this person is in a relationship with you, OK, and it's personal or you want them to be in a relationship with you. OK, you have the power to just walk away from it. Sorry for those who have gotten married to these type of people. Um, Morpheus and so many other people have been telling you don't do it. You know, Tom Likas have been telling you this for years. Don't do it. He's had his program for a long time, for a long time. It's been way before the year 2000. OK, when you look at that stress from year 2000 up to now. 20 something more than 20 something years more than 20 years and we're still doing it so you get stuck in a marriage with this woman or man who have never changed still the same still acting stupid still donkey dunking behind your back alcohol problem issues from college or high school in their head okay now you can't get out of it unless you do um the drastic divorce issue sorry for you okay the prevention is that you can turn around and teach other men not to do the same thing okay because most times it's going to benefit the woman that's why i'm talking about the men as unbalanced as you may think it is it's for the men okay because morpheus sees the unbalance here in america i see that the woman gets a soft glove Men are kicked around as if they are made out of rocks and they are not. Okay. 
that's going to have to change. Marriage was never for the man. It was for her. And even more today in this generation where women are liberated, it is even more for the woman and the man benefits nothing because you girls don't want to do anything. OK, so he has to do all things for himself and he practically can. As shameful as it is, but he don't have a choice. OK, because now you're out there with the backhoe, the bulldozer and the jackhammer because you're saying you can do it. So go do it. Nobody's saying not. If you want to do it, have fun. OK. But the wall, the wall. The brick wall, okay, isn't respected. It's not respected until it's in your face. When it comes to religion, my emailer, and when it comes to relationships, people will keep going until the last pen drops. Until they come across a drastic situation that tests their faith and belief because they didn't test their faith and belief until they meet the doctors and the doctors are telling them i can't help you because are you a family member of yours go down some kind of way and you ask one stupid question that i'm gonna tell you right now is stupid okay you say oh why did god allow this <laughs> why y'all always say that y'all love saying that y'all love it love it it's like it's just a it's a natural reaction. Why did God sit back and allow that to happen? I don't understand. Where's God in this situation? How come God don't care? God did no 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 stop right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. Stop. Because there was a form of godly energy. There is a form of godly energy. I'm not saying that it's God. I said godly energy of superpower of the universe, not some dude splitting the squat sky and uh, creating miracles that that are uh, that are made of human attributes. OK, I'm talking about things that you can put your hands on. Or manipulate. OK such as messengers who tell you what not to get into before you do such as the good spirit of uh tom Likas and other guys who are sane and trying to give you power empowerment and when you don't listen you suffer that information that energy itself okay is a form of godly power because you don't have to have it and us men don't have to save you or for some of you women we don't have to tell you what's actually going on, what some of you women are doing. OK. So therefore, when the wall comes, when the brick wall comes, you say, oh, it's why did God know? Because why did God do this? Why? Because I told you before and I'm going to tell you again and again and again and again and again. Your interpretation and perception of God is a traditional perception and teaching and format and program system in your brain when you was a child. So therefore, no, your essence of God isn't going to show up or listen to you because God exists in a different way than what you have been taught. You've been taught wrong. You didn't question it many years ago while you were feeling good high off the hog thinking that your religion will protect you from everything protect you from all type of scorns and disasters in the world that you are saved from you know lord knows what because you definitely ain't saved from yourself okay as some people claim oh you know god's saving us from ourselves you know how silly that sounds god is saving you from you what could you all right some somebody said that a while ago and i asked him well, you're a sinner I said, what is God saving you for? Oh, God's saving me from myself. I'm like, why don't you just throw yourself in a cave, put a chain around your neck and don't live your life? I mean, it's, it's silly. You don't have you don't you really don't have no confidence. And uh, what do you call that? Uh, self-esteem 
you let the church take that much away from you. Well, God's saving me from me. Then that means you hate yourself and you need to go speak to a psychologist. No, I won't pay for it. Marriage with people with all the red signs, all the red signs. You think that you can change a person and make them better. You think that you can just spend a year and a half with them and they're not going to be that person that you met who was donkey dunking on everybody else before they met you having uh, um, bad lesions, drinking, smoking, and you you just so happen to be the golden duck and they automatically going to change because you tell them to change. It takes hell and fire for people to change. You don't understand. You, you will not find that out until you get older. When you start reaching the age between 40 and 50 years old, wisdom starts kicking in. And on that subject, before I even, before I lose my pace on that subject, okay, there are so many people who are 40 and 50 years old who did some seriously stupid, dumb stuff, okay, in their past life, okay? Only age slowed them down. I speak to many of people and friends and they they pour their facts of reality to me based on what have happened to them or happened to one of their friends. And it seems like it seems like a twilight zone because it's unreal because the stuff that happens is usually the things I'm telling you about where you have this girl who have been donkey dunking all her life, mistreating uh, Point Dexter, the nerds, as if they were worthless, okay? She bypassed all these guys to be with bad guys, or some of you call them thugs, okay? Um, worthless guys. She didn't do her just diligence in taking care of herself, didn't work out, didn't do anything as far as food and health and stuff is concerned. And now all of a sudden that she's 42 years old, 42 years old. My friend tells me that he had a conversation with her recently and uh, she says something like, oh, I just don't want to, I, I, I just, I, I want to be in a serious relationship. I don't want, I don't want to be, I don't play games anymore. I want a man who's just seriously ready to settle down. I don't, I don't have time to be doing that like that. I'll just stay home. I don't go anywhere anymore. I just, you know, I'm just chilling. I need to be at peace right now. I, I don't have time for that no more. Did she find anybody ever? No. Have she gained weight? You better believe it. Does she have a child? Yep. But guess what? Baby daddy's not there. Oops. Does she have the relationships that she will want? Nope. And guess what? Guess what? It was actually one of my friends who was the point dexter at the time and uh <laughs> she treated him bad disappeared on him and now all of a sudden because she's done her spinning wheel she wants to come back and be with him but now the way she's talking as he say she's talking as if she's she's straightened out now you know her wilding days are over and it made me chuckle because the only reason why is because she's old now. <laughs> Sometimes you don't. It's like that with with finances and businesses and jobs. No matter where you go. Sometimes it's not it's not even smarts. It's not smarts and intelligence. It's that you got old. It's that life kicked you in the butt. The wall hit you so hard. That was the only thing to stop you. And now all of a sudden you gain wisdom because you hit the wall. I think anybody's going to be smarter. Once that hard wall hits you in the face, it don't feel good. It's like a, I know some of you have probably uh, tried to get out of a car or you get into a building or you walk into a door or you lean over while you're in the kitchen and there's a countertop. You know, sometimes you probably, you would hit your head on something. You would hit your head on the countertop or the car ledge or something like that. Just that impact itself, not only does it make you want to curse and, and punch something that's not there, okay? It makes you mad at yourself for doing that. You feel silly for doing it, but you would never do it again. It's a 
It's an event that's unforgettable. Once you hit your head on something, you would never do it again. As a matter of fact, you'd be cautious from that point on. You're going to be looking up to make sure that you don't hit your head again. Okay. But for some people, that's what it takes in order for them to stop their rampage of self-destruction or destroying others. So when you are in a relationship with people and you think you can change them or wherever that you live in your life, and especially when it comes to religion, you can't change people. It's not about changing them. They have to want to come to the light on their own. So what you do is you give them this, you give them your standard. You'll say, this is what my book is all about. This is what my this is what I'll accept in my house. This is what I'll accept if you're going to be a part of me. OK, a part of my life. This is this is what it's going to be. And if that person don't line up, don't try to make them change. Walk away from it. Because most times if they want to be a part of their world, they'll automatically drop their baggage at the door and begin to take up your principles and do what you tell them to do. There's no need to argue. If they really care about you, they'll start making changes on their own. You'll say, this is what I tolerate. This is what I won't tolerate. And they'll start doing what you tolerate. If you don't tolerate a thing, okay, they understand that there's going to be some friction that uh, they're going to have to deal with. You see, there's no need to struggle with people on an everyday basis. My audios, for some of you, if you made it this far to the end of this audio, okay, um, Thank you for that. And I appreciate the um, the energy and the time that you've taken to listen to this. OK, so I get a chance to give you a little bit more breadcrumbs and facts. OK. These audios and these videos, listen, is not to change you. No, it's not to change the American people. It's not to twist your mind or and say, oh, Morpheus, this guy, this this Leon C. Morpheus. Well, he is something else. He's really trying to. No, 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 no. This is giving you the light. Whereas should you choose on your own to begin to think differently and deeper and better. OK, you will begin to be the most powerful person that you can ever be. You can be the best you because you'll be doing it on your own and not without force. Not without force, you will begin to see things for yourself because once you start making those small steps, you will start seeing life the way that it really is. OK. And everything will become clear to you. It is a matrix situation. It is Morpheus and Neo. Now, I know that that expression and that terminology has been around for a long time, but the matrix is still here, America. It's not gone and it's getting worse because every time you close your eyes, there's a new computer, there's a new machine taking your job. OK, there's a new iPhone. There's a new something, always something electrical and machinery. But as a human race, you're not evolving. Are you understanding that you're not being the best that you could be? You're not being at you supposed to be better than any machine or smartphone or devices that are around you. You are the prize of existence. But because we are so dumbed down, we are so weakened and so willing to sell out ourselves because we feel like our soul means nothing. We trade that off for the machines. We trade that off for computers. We trade it off for laziness. We trade it off for telling our kids, well, I keep telling him to do something, but he's not going to do it. So I give up. You give up on your task of your child or the future of America because it's too hard for you, but you brought the child into existence. And therefore you give up and just give them a smartphone. We're going to give them a tablet. Oh, they're going out to the big, bad world, the Matrix. I don't need to be by their side. They're grown. They're 18. They're 24 years old. They're 32. What can I do as a parent? And I tell you, if you have access to your children, you're not being kept from your children like what a lot of American women love to do to men. OK, if it's not just a simple visitation where you just see them on the weekend and the Monday, that's not enough. Love is constant contact. 
you got to be there to be a good influence to your kids. If you have that ability, then you have the ability to change tomorrow. You have that ability to change tomorrow because if you've taken up that responsibility and willing to take up that responsibility, then that means you're willing to take up everything that it comes that comes with it. It's a package deal. So in the end of this audio, because I have more for you and I can't put all my elbow grease into this one because there's more to come. It applies to every orifice in your existence. People do not change until the ceiling falls. That's just simply it. And it's sad because <laughs> we're just that stupid today. Excuse me. We're just that decreased in awareness and instinct where we don't step back and start thinking and take more fundamental steps in the more deeper, more profound conditioning of the society because we are so preconditioned with planned destruction within ourselves. You understand? Whereas that focus point of understanding the reality, okay, it's not what you think it is. So people have to find out the hard way. That means the wheels have to fall off. That means you have to see people going through hard times. That means the wall is going to be, it has to cave in. That means you will witness and you will hear constantly over and over again on your news, on your smartphone, that somebody did something else stupid and that stupid person allowed it to happen and so forth and so on. Okay. Because sometimes that is the universe trying to teach them a lesson, not what you think. Oh, it's, why did God allow that? No, 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 no. Get God of you, mom. Stop blaming God for everything and the devil. Stop blaming God and the devil for everything. It's mankind, human beings doing that to themselves. You understand? You're doing that to yourself from ignorance and you do that to yourself where there's a good thing out of love and compassion. And oftentimes, you don't see the effect till later because the machines, the buildings, your items, your smartphones, computers, plastic and dumb stuff that you have as human beings. OK, it's made by another human being who created it, not God. And I know some of you say, oh, God have inspired them. Yeah, 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 yeah. God, you, God have inspired them to make no, no. Now you're still blaming God. Oh, God made this machine and that machine hurt this person. So that means uh, uh, God's responsible for allowing that person to make it. No, 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 no. Because before it happens, listen, here's your kicker. And I'm going to kick the chair legs from underneath you when I get done. But this is it. There is always signs before it happens. That's right. You have all the facts that you have at your hands. It's constantly displayed before you before the situations happen. OK, you have many years when you're sitting in the church to question and challenge. You got many years or time when you're dating somebody. When you first meet them for the few minutes, the few hours, the few months or the year and a half to get it right and say, OK, this is just the way that they are. Will I accept it or not accept it? It is. Maybe not as severe as a life and death situation. Okay. Because with religion and relationships, there is a door out of it. But it is hard. That it, those are hard things to get into in your life. Those are hard, uh, close, life intimate energies that you are accepting or negating. So therefore, it does have an impact on you because nobody wants to have their heart broken. Nobody wants to be disappointed and nobody wants to be told that they are a liar and nobody wants to be told that they wasted 12, 20, 10 years, 30 years in a system of religion that wasn't really true. Nobody wants to be told that. So they'll hold on to it and fight everybody as they're going down. OK, but the road is going to cross eventually. And actually, let me step back. It's been crossing for many generations with the signs of the world. You just you just don't want to hear it because a thousand other people believe. So you feel like you should because a thousand other people believe. Don't you understand that a thousand people can be wrong and you're the only person that's right? If you ever hear a psychologist or so-called person who's trying to teach you something, um, they, they usually try to wear a so-called professional badge because that's how the world became the way that it is by people being in wrong positions lying to you. 
because they want you to feel good and line up to the program they'll tell you no you no 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 you have to if everybody's doing it there might be some truth behind what everybody's doing it so you just have to get your mind right because maybe maybe you're kind of a um, I don't know how to say it about the disrespect. Maybe you're kind of crazy and you end up believing them. Well, maybe I'm the only person that, that think aliens exist <laughs> just to give you an example. And you got like a thousand other people who say, no, they don't exist. No, no, man, you crazy. You out of your mind. It don't matter what the subject is. Okay. I'm just giving you an example. I'm not doing alien talk. So Here I am. you'll be the Here one I person. See. 